Good morning, YouTubers. This video is going to be replacing a steering gear, or some people also call it the steering box. You can see I have ATF all over the underside of this guy everywhere. Unfortunately, you can also see this looks pretty new. Um, I just replaced this. I didn't get a video of it. It's a remanufactured one and it is leaking like crazy. I parked this in the garage just about eight hours ago and I already have that much fluid on the floor. And you can see it has made its way all over. So we'll be replacing this. This time I'll get this on video. Hopefully the new one is uh, leak free. I also, uh, hard to see on the video, very hard to see. I made sure that it wasn't the tubes, or the, excuse me, the hoses that come from the steering pump, uh, because those are pretty high pressure, and I wasn't sure if it was maybe leaking down the body of this onto the pitman arm here, the pitman nut. But uh, it doesn't appear to be, everything appears to be coming straight out of the bottom, which is the reason why I replaced this in the first place. So stay tuned. First step's pretty easy. We're going to take out the coolant bottle for the reservoir and pretty simple. There is right there a clip that connects this hose to the coolant bottle. We'll take that off with just a pair of pliers. It's a simple clamp. And then the bottle basically lifts out. Um, I'll show you the back side of it, but literally it comes up and then kind of tilts and, uh, and comes out. You can see on the back side these guys right here so they just slip into some notches there's one at the top and one at the bottom here's a little bit better view of what we're working with now so that is the steering gear starting from that yellow piece of plastic right here all the way down to there and now my finger made it refocus. Uh, two hoses for the pump here and here. We'll take those off in a future step. But the first thing that we're going to do is drain as much power steering fluid as we can. This will get messy. Uh, I have a couple little tips for uh, not spilling as much as possible all over your garage floor. I'll uh, show you that here in a moment. Now comes some of the fun part. The next part is to remove the pinch bolt from the steering linkage. And to give you an idea of what a pinch bolt looks like, that's this guy here. So this is coming from your steering wheel. It comes into this shaft and this guy literally is just smashing metal together to couple these two. So there's a similar one down here connected to the steering gear itself right here in another U-joint. What you can't see is the pinch bolt here. When the steering wheel is straight ahead, which it should be when you're doing this, the pinch bolt is facing almost toward this pulley, a little bit down. So I have my wrench on it to try and give you 
an idea. It's not the easiest thing to see. But there's the pinch bolt there. This is a 13 millimeter bolt. All you gotta do is loosen it. It's not that tight. Um, it might be stuck depending on how long it's been since you've done anything with that. But um, you can either come up from underneath or come at it from the top, uh, which is what I'm doing. I also happen to have a uh, socket wrench that has a, a U-joint in it so I can get around some of these hoses and stuff. But all you gotta do is loosen that. Uh, you can take it all the way out if you want to. You can kind of see the back side of it coming through there. Um, just back it out until you can't see any threads anymore. And then this uh, entire linkage right here, the steering linkage, will just pull right out. Okay, so I lied, just because it's fun. Um, the steering linkage will not pull out of the steering gear while it's connected because there's just not enough give. Um, so you can see it's still on there. But um, it will come off once we undo the bolts that mount this thing to the frame, which we'll do uh, in a couple steps. But the first thing that we'll do is disconnect these two hoses. So uh, that is a 18 millimeter on each. And you can see one's kind of behind there. This is not easy. Obviously, you can't get a socket around these because there's a hose coming out the top. Um, you need to use an open-ended box wrench, uh, and it's going to be very tedious. So two words of advice. One is wrap a shop towel around the base of these because once they give, they will start leaking fluid all over the place. Uh, and just to keep it from dripping all over, wrap a shop towel around it. The other thing that I do is use a rubber glove. And as soon as I get the end out of there, I just stuff it down inside of a rubber glove, which catches all the goo that's coming out. Um, I will also take my um, bleeder vacuum and stick it inside of each of the ends of these hoses and just suck out as much as I can. Otherwise, when you set them aside, they're just going to continue to drip everywhere. And one of the things that we'll be doing is replacing the rubber seals in these just to make sure they don't leak. Um, and you, it, it's almost impossible when they're covered in ATF. So that'll be our next step. So here's the first one pretty much out. It, it'll get to a point where you can turn it by hand. Um, the threads are not in. It's just kind of sitting on there. But as soon as I lift this thing up, it's going to leak fluid everywhere. So have your rubber glove ready. You can see I've got the shop towel ready to go so it doesn't leak all the way down the body. But uh, that's, that's pretty much it. Get it out of there. Get it uh, set aside. And then if you can suck some fluid out with a bleeder back or something like that, that's your best bet. All right, first one's done. You can sort of see what that looks like once it's out. This is the end. I just have it set up kind of behind this other hose. You'll, you'll not be able to get it completely out of your way because it's stuck behind all these other hoses down here. But uh, you can set it up like this. I was able to use a brake bleeder to get all the fluid out of mine. If you don't have one, well, first off, you're going to need one when you put the new steering pump in because you need to be able to suck air out of the lines once you start adding ATF because the new pump isn't going to have any ATF in it, or I'm sorry, the new steering gear isn't going to have any ATF in it. Um, and you, you don't want to have a bunch of air inside of there, just like you don't want to have air in your brake lines. This is the seal that we're going to replace. Um, if it would focus. There we go. Nope. Anyway, that little black O-ring right at the end is what we're going to replace as well. So first one's off. Second one is now a little bit more visible. Same thing. I'll wrap a shop towel around it. At some point, I'll be able to use my fingers to get that off, and then I will uh, use the bleeder to get as much of that fluid out as I can. Now the fun part begins. So first thing we're going to do is remove the track bar. This is right underneath 
the Pittman arm here. I don't know why my camera's not focusing. It's really irritating. So there's the Pittman arm, which is the bottom of our steering gear that we've been working on. The track bar is on the way, so obviously we need to get that out of the way. This is a 21 millimeter bolt on both sides. Well, one's a nut, one's a bolt. But, uh, you know, keep one in position with a fixed end wrench, like a box wrench. And then, uh, you know, air hammer or a big breaker bar, 21 millimeter, and then uh, just drop, drop that down. Track bar is removed. You'll see the Pittman arm here. This uh, wire loom, I would suggest getting it out of your way. There is a clip right there. Just pop that clip out so this whole thing comes out of your way. This is uh, the wiring for your fog lights. Um, you know, if you don't have fog lights, I guess, you know, don't worry about it. Um, so, my gosh, my camera today. Uh, as you can see, my Pittman arm and the nut are all brand new. I told you in the beginning of this video, I've done this once before, and I can tell you from experience that on a Jeep of this age, which is a 2008 with roughly 200,000 miles on it, you will not ever be able to get the Pittman arm off the bottom of your steering gear intact. You can do searches on YouTube. Uh, there's guys that use plasma cutters to cut them off. There's, you know, there's no way to get it off without breaking it. So my advice is when you place your order for your new steering gear, go ahead and order a new Pittman arm and a Pittman nut and washer, which are on there, as you can see. Um, and you may want to order a new end link for your drag link. So I also had to replace this because I couldn't get the Pittman arm off of the old one. So you can see that's new compared to <laughs> the rest of the drag link. Um, again, my advice, go ahead and buy all three components, the drag link end, the Pittman arm, and the steering gear. Oh, I guess more than just three. And the Pittman nut and the washer. My gosh, the camera is killing me. So we're going to take the Pittman arm off of the steering gear. Um, that's going to require probably a ball joint press. I'm going to see if I can just tap it off since it hasn't been on here that long. But uh, I'll get back to you and let you know how that went. So the first thing is to remove that Pittman nut. All right, we are in Pittman arm puller land. Uh, even as <laughs> uh, least amount of time as this Pittman arm has been on here, I could not tap it off. So there's a few different versions of this. This happens to be the one that I have. But the basic idea is that those jaws on the top are pulling down on the Pittman arm. And this jack screw in the middle is pushing up against the spindle so that, uh, right, the, just the pressure pulls that off. So two things about using these. One, uh, wear safety glasses, please, gloves. Um, these things can slip. Parts, especially when they're old, um, can come apart really quickly. Um, some of them can break apart, so don't mess around with that. Secondly, um, grease down the jack screw. Uh, with silicone spray or jack screw lube or whatever you've got, it'll make turning it through the, the threaded area right here easier on you. Uh, and then the second thing is you can either use a, um, if you have a really powerful drill, I guess you could use that. Um, most people use either a breaker bar down here. So you basically put, this one happens to be a 17 millimeter head on your breaker bar and start turning uh, up against that. The other thing you can use is a impact wrench, right? Um, to do some of the work for you. So I'll be doing that and we'll see the finished product here in a minute. Okay, Pittman arm is off. Uh, cleaned up just a little bit. Um, next will be the bolts that hold this thing onto the frame. You can actually see them up here 
There's two on this side, two on the other. You actually get to these from the wheel well. And uh, best way to do that is to get the tire off the car. So we're gonna do that and that'll give us access to these four bolts. Okay, last major piece on the removal. These are the four bolts holding the steering gear onto the frame, one of them hiding back there. Um, the only issue you may run into is like in this case, we have a leveling kit on this Jeep and the spring is kind of in the way there. Uh, I'm gonna try and use a universal joint socket to see if I can get around that. Um, since I've done this once before, they might be, uh, they might come off a little bit easier than they did the first time. Um, if the spring is in the way for you, then you'll need to do two things. You'll need to disconnect the sway bar linkage, uh, whichever end you prefer, and you'll also need to remove one end of the shock so that you can drop the axle down. Right now I have it on a stand. If I need to move it, I'll need to put a jack underneath it, remove that, and then gently lower it until I've got enough gap where I can get to that from the spring. I'm gonna try and do it without, we'll see. Last piece of advice, when you're taking these four bolts out, um, leave one of them, the last one in, so you can get it off with your fingers and then come around underneath and hold that steering gear while you reach around and undo that last one. Otherwise the whole thing will just fall. Uh, you don't want that. That's it. Okay, hopefully you can get a good angle of this. Um, you can see the Pittman spindle right there. And I have one more bolt, so I'm gonna get up underneath here reach around the one side and get that bolt off and then try and gently lower the steering gear. Finished product, there are the four mounting bolts for the steering gear. There is the end of the steering linkage that I was hung up on. So ignore what I said earlier when I was uh, disconnecting the steering linkage. Do not leave that pinch bolt in. I guess any amount at all of thread in there is enough to uh, make it a real pain in the rear to get out. So basically, um, you just bring it down, you know, right through the axle, move the, uh, whew, not the tie rod, the track bar out of the way, um, and all the other good stuff, and then just bring it down. You can see it also uh, will leak lots of fluid out of those holes. So this is the original one. Well, not the original, but the one that I'd replaced. You can see it's remanufactured. Looks like it's in good shape. Here is my new remanufactured one. Um, this one, uh, this one's been well loved. Hopefully it's been tested and the seals are good. I mean, this thing is quite, uh, quite dirty compared to the one that I'm replacing, but, uh, it's the same brand. It is, uh, I can't even remember. I got it from Rock Auto, like I get a lot of my stuff. It comes with a two-year warranty. The good thing about Rock Auto is that I can return this to them and not have to go through the manufacturer. So the only thing I have to pay is the shipping charge. So that's, uh, that's pretty good. So we'll be putting this one back in. Um, basically, process is reversed. Steering linkage goes here. There's your four bolts. So get it set up in there. Um, you actually don't have to get this in place. Uh, it sounds weird, but you can have this mounted and then there's enough play 
and the linkage to get it back on there. Um, I don't know why getting it off doesn't work quite the same way, but putting it on is, uh, it does. So set it up in there and get these bolts started and then we can uh, get this thing mounted and I'll give you the torques. All four bolts back in. Um, these get tightened to 87 foot pounds, which isn't a ton. Uh, it's a tight spot, so not the not the best place to be using a torque wrench, but it works out okay. Um, again, 18 millimeter, 87 foot pounds. We'll just tighten all those down, and then we'll be ready to do some more. Okay, all four bolts in, torqued to 87 foot pounds. A couple things I wanted to call out on uh, the spline here. You'll notice that there are these gaps in the spline all the way around if I wasn't blocking with my light. First thing, these come preset from the factory for center. So it's hard to turn it, but as you're messing around, like don't play with this because the way this is set up from the factory is perfectly centered. So what that means is uh, your wheels should be facing relatively straight. If they're not 100%, you can adjust that later um, with the uh, with the drag link. But the other thing to note is on the Pitman arm, there are similar splines. Hopefully you can see that. So basically those gaps line up with the gaps that are on the output shaft of the steering gear. So basically we'll just take the drag link, we'll set it back up, we'll push it up into place and loosely put in the nut, or <laughs> the washer, and the nut. And then I'll give you the torque specs for those. Pitman nut and washer are on and the spline is aligned. The size of this nut is one and five sixteenths, which is like 33, 34 millimeters. I, it's so close. So uh, if you have one and five sixteenths, that works. Uh, 33, 34, try which one is not the loose one. Uh, the torque spec for this is a whopping 185 foot pounds, which is really fun on your back. But uh, that's it. Also, don't forget to uh, put this wire loom back up here if you haven't already done that. Uh, if you took it out, and that's gonna, gonna be really fun for me to do on the camera. And uh, the other thing I'd recommend is maybe some blue thread locker on the Pitman nut, not red. Otherwise, you'll never get it off. Uh, blue will just keep it from backing out. That's what the nut's supposed to do, but. I noticed when I was taking this off earlier that this was not 185 foot-pounds. So it did loosen up uh, since when I first put it on. Pitman nut at 185 foot-pounds. That's a lot of torque. Um, a couple maybe hints, words of advice. If you have the car up on jack stands, you'll notice that when you start to turn this, you get to a point where you're putting so much torque that the pitman arm turns and the wheels turn with it. And that's no big deal because they go to full lock, except for the fact that then the drag link is in your way. When this pitman arm is swung all the way over this way, it's hard to get up in here and get enough leverage. So my recommendation is to put the car, um, well, first of all, lift the car up if you haven't already. Turn the wheels all the way to the passenger side. And that will pull the drag link all the way over this way. Then lower the car so the weight of the car is working against you here. Um, and the wheels don't turn, right? Um, and then get this thing cranked down to 185 foot-pounds. Then I would... Um, figure out where your track bar alignment is because the next thing we're going to do is put the track bar back on and this is where it goes and this is one of those things where you'll notice it's just slightly misaligned it's uh, a little bit passenger 
Well, that's because my wheels are also passenger. So what I would do is raise the car back up because you don't want to be using the steering wheel right now. If you have the car raised, you can use your hands to turn the tires and basically get this lined up by rotating the tires until that's lined up. Then stick your bolt in and tighten away. This goes to 125 foot-pounds and again it's a 21 millimeter bolt. All right, now it's time to put the steering uh, linkage back on the shaft. So the good news is, so this is poking out here from our new steering gear. This is the shaft and the good news is it only goes on one way. So it slides literally right on. And then you take that pinch bolt and try and get your hand back in here and get that started. And then you can finish that up um, either again from underneath or um, from up here. You'll notice even though I just hand tightened it, I can't get this off now. This is the mistake I was making earlier that I forgot. This pinch bolt, the screw actually is part of, it doesn't just pinch the two pieces together. Um, it actually is part of the mechanism that keeps this from backing off. So that's it. Uh, so good news is it only goes on one way. Uh, bad news is you're very likely going to need to adjust your steering wheel because it may not mate up exactly like you had it before. Uh, it, should because the new steering gear is supposed to be centered from the factory but i've noticed that uh, the steering wheel is off by 5 10 15 degrees after i get this back on here in some cases so that's it um tighten this up and it is 36 foot pounds not a lot all right next we are going to replace the o-rings on these uh, pretty easy. Basically, you just pick them off. Discard. New O-ring. I mean, just a rubber O-ring. Not easy to do with the gloves on, but... That's it. We'll do the other one and then we will reinstall those back in here. So I'll show you that real quick. Easy peasy. There are plugs over the existing ones just to keep crap from getting in there. These look like garbage. Still not 100% happy with this reman, but the uh, hose that I just replaced the O ring on goes in the yellow. And then the other one uh, that's dangling over here goes in the red. So this one is the one that uh, has the metal all the way around. Um, trying to think of an easy way to describe it. Well, hopefully you kept track <laughs> when you took them out. Uh, so anyway, this one's the back, or driver's side, actually, yellow. And the other one is the red. So you just pop those plugs out and then hand tighten these. And then when you get that wrench back on them, this one's a really tough one. It's really hard to find a torque wrench that is an open-ended box wrench, but the torque spec is 27 foot pounds. It's not a lot. So don't over torque these. Good news is the seal is here, not there. So it's not like an air fitting or a hydraulic fitting when this is the seal. Um, but you definitely don't want to over torque it and strip something out. So that's it. 27 foot pounds. We'll put those back in. Both lines in. Torqued to 27 foot pounds. Cleaned up around the threads a little bit because you will get a little bit of brake fluid. Or not brake fluid. Uh, ATF or power steering fluid. Same thing. Uh, last thing we will do is put the coolant bottle back. So that goes right here. Again, there are some areas down here that those little clips slide into, and then the whole bottle just fits down in there. 
and then we will reconnect the hose that I uh, pulled off earlier. And then the last thing we will do is get some more ATF back in this system and uh, bleed it out. Okay, now comes the bleeding of the steering fluid part. You'll see I've got a flashlight here behind the steering fluid reservoir. That's because it's kind of hard to see the level um, so you have a light behind it there. I added some fluid before I started filming and then realized I hadn't started filming. So the process, uh, there's like, everybody has their own way of doing this. Some manufacturers recommend one way. Some say don't bleed at all because the system will purge air bubbles automatically. I'm following the Mopar recommendation from the service manual. So basically you fill the fluid up to anywhere between min and max. Right now it's at min, but uh, don't, they give you a warning not to fill it over max. I honestly don't know why, um, but uh, fill it to the max, put in a bleeder cap and turn on the bleeder and you will see the fluid level drop. Keep repeating that process until you no longer see the fluid level drop. And I'll show you what that looks like here in just a sec. All right, so you can see I've got it filled between min and max. I have a bleeder cap on to my vacuum. And as soon as I hit it, um, you're gonna see it drop pretty drastically. So once it hits that, fill it back up, rinse, repeat until it no longer does that. After it doesn't do that now, then we'll also need to purge some of the air out of the actual steering gear, and I'll show you how to do that. So keep doing this process until um, it doesn't drain anymore. Okay, we've completed that part of the procedure. Uh, took about four times for it to finally settle in. So the next thing that we will need to do is start the car get it up to operating temperature and then cycle the steering wheel from lock to lock three times so all the way left all the way right three times but do not hold the steering wheel in the locked position do that three times shut off the motor we'll come back and check the levels which will undoubtedly be low uh, i emptied when I did the bleed, just over a quart of fluid out of the system. Uh, you can see that here. This is when I originally did the bleed. Uh, and I've only put about half a quart back in. So I'm expecting to add at least a quart, um, maybe even a little bit more, depending on how much other leakage I had before I replaced the pump. So we'll do that. We'll come back and check the level after we do the three locks. As you can see, we dropped back below the men, so we'll have to do that process over again. We'll fill it to between min and max. We'll apply vacuum. We'll keep doing that till we don't get any more air bubbles. We'll start the car and do it again. The other thing that we need to also be looking for is to make sure that there are no leaks here. So pay close attention to what these looked like before you started the vehicle and make sure that there's no fluid bubbling out of here. Um, you can also just do what I'm doing right now while the engine is running and you can see if the pump is leaking fluid or not. Now you'll see that it's wet around some of the edges there. That's because when we reinstalled them, uh, there's always a little bit of bleed. You can put brake cleaner on it if you really want to clean it up, uh, dry towel, whatever you want to do. But check those connections very specifically because uh, those are high pressure connections and then the fluid reservoir and we'll come back after we've done this a few more times all right final level just between min and max which is where it needs to be the whole uh, process took about three three more times with the three turns left three turns right and to fill um, each time just a little bit less of a dip this last dip, I just left it um, because I wasn't really seeing any progress. So 
that is it. I uh, hope this was helpful and good luck.